Welcome to the 16th episode of our third series on the surnames and now DNA of early families of Appalachia and the good old American South. I was excited to see your reactions to last week's episode. Number 15. You seem to like the introduction of DNA information where available on Y chromosome haplogroups. If you like a deeper dive into how to use Y chromosome haplogroups in genealogical research, take a look at my video titled Y chromosome haplogroups where does your father's line originate? I'll post a link to it in the description. It's not an extensive uh, end-all, be-all sort of thing, but it will get you started in understanding and using that kind of technology. As far as I can tell, we're now the only YouTube channel that combines family history, origins, and meanings of surnames, as well as DNA, results to help people dig deeper into their family's origins. Keep in mind that Y chromosome is passed only down the male line, so it should parallel the descent of surnames, unless there was some hanky-panky in the old barn loft. There's another complicating factor that can create multiple lines of DNA for a given surname, even though a name may have a common linguistic origin. Biblical names, for instance, could pop up anywhere that Christians or Jews lived. Place names, too, may have common origins and or meanings, but can lack common DNA. Take my last name, for instance. Van is a city in France, the E and the S is uh, silent. Anyone from that town could have adopted the name. Also in Gaelic, it can mean white, or it could also mean a person from Ellen Vannon, the beautiful little Isle of Man. Unfortunately, or fortunately for us, I can't tell whether there was hanky-panky in your or my family trees, but I can tell you if there are different stories of origin for your surname. To date, we've covered origin stories for about a thousand surnames. Speaking of them, if you'd like a free copy of the surname catalog, stick around to the end to find out how you could get one. It's just an email away. Also, please stick around to the end for a programming announcement. Promises to be an informative show, so I hope you'll join me. Number one, Pullen. Right off the bat, we find ourselves tracing back to the Norman Conquest in 1066 to find the origin and meaning of Pullen and a similar surname. The person who requested this name indicated that it might be an alternate form of Pulliam, which I will cover in number two. Pullen is regarded as Anglo-Norman, but it has two different meanings. Henry Harrison insists that it was given to a poulterer. Colonel Sanders might have liked that guy because he was a keeper of chickens. <laughs> However, the Dictionary of American Family Names says it was given to a Norman who was a keeper of a foal colt. If you're unfamiliar with foal colt, it was a male horse under the age of one who was intact or hadn't been castrated. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> now, if you're a pullin', you can celebrate that philanthropy of the philanthropy of Richard Stanhope Pullen, born in 1822, died in 1895. He gave money and lands to support at least three colleges and universities in central North Carolina. William Peace University, North Carolina State University, and the University of North Carolina at Greensboro. Richard, despite being born in 1822, might not have known that his Pullen ancestors arrived in Virginia in the mid-1600s. Thomas Henry, or Henri, Pullen Sr., born in 1629, died in 1689, was from West Yorkshire, England. As far as I can tell, he was the first Pullen in America. Thomas was Richard's third great-grandfather. I was able to find some information on Pullen Y chromosomes. The largest cluster was RM269. That's found in Western Europe and the Isles, and of course in America, wherever there were immigrants from those places. A smaller cluster of six Pullen men carry EM35, which is found in Europe and the Middle East, but has greater representation in Africa. That group is followed by a cluster of three men with the I haplogroup. It's found in the Isles, but originated in Scandinavia. It was probably carried by Vikings. Clearly, the Pullens are now antebellum family and of English origin with at least three genetic lines. Number two, Pulliam. As I mentioned in discussing Pullen, Pulliam is sometimes thought to be uh, <clears throat> an alternate form of Pullen, but while some might have used it that way, it has a different origin and meaning. 
In an old form of Welsh, the language Welsh, AP meant the son of so-and-so like Mac or Mick would in Gaelic. For instance, Lloyd ap, Lloyd ap William would have meant Lloyd the son of William. Over time, the AP was dropped, so AP William morphed into Pulliam. Looking deeper into DNA, there are fewer DNA tests for men named Pulliam than there are for fellows named Pullen, but they are all in the R269 or descendant subclades, again, Western Europe and the Isles. Doesn't mean they're all, well, they share a common ancestor, but it's thousands of years ago. I found antebellum families named Pulliam in Virginia, Georgia, North Carolina, and Kentucky. I'm not surprised that the oldest family that I could find was in Virginia. Edward Pulliam was born in Yorkshire, England in 1607, the, uh, the year that Jamestown was first settled. He married a nice lady named Jane Shef Sheffield, at least that's the rumor anyway, that her, and their son, James, was born in Henrico, or Henrico County, of Virginia in 1640. His great-grandson was Joseph Pulliam. He was born in 1720 and died around 1805. Although born in Virginia, he relocated to Georgia. Clearly, the Pulliam family is antebellum and features at least one major haplogroup. Number three and number four, Ellis and Ellis Son. From a linguistic perspective, Ellis is an English name that was most likely derived from the biblical name Elias. However, it was adopted in Wales during the Puritan era of the 1500s. It appears in the Scottish records at least two centuries earlier during the guardianship of William Wallace in the late 1290s. McClysic, that's Edward McClysic in Ireland, tells us that uh, Elias or Ellis appears in the records in the Dublin area or Pale in 1282. Ellison, of course, means the son of Ellison. I should say Ellison means the son of Ellis, but it eventually became a distinct name. Born in Wales in 1683, Thomas Ellis uh, immigrated to Pennsylvania, where he married a Welsh immigrant named Jane Hughes in 1712. Their son, Morris Ellis, born in 1715, died in 1791, was born in Pennsylvania, but he moved to Virginia. Meanwhile, the Ellisons in the South can trace at least one of their lines to Robert Ellison Sr., born 1742, died in 1806, who was born in County Antrim, Ireland. There are at least 11 distinct chromosome lines of men named Ellis. The largest cluster is RM269 in its subclades, but there is a sizable cluster of men in the I haplogroup. At the end of the day, Ellis is linguistically English, but has deeper Celtic or Viking roots. It's hard to pinpoint, pinpoint Ellison DNA because the folks who hold the DNA test results mix it in with men named Allison, which is itself a distinct name. Nevertheless, there are similar patterns of R1B and I haplogroups to create uh, various lines. Number five, <laughs> Allison. Let's go ahead and do it. Not to be confused with the male rocker Alice Cooper, whose real name was Vincent D. Furnier, Allison means the son of Alice. The first Allison in England was named after his mom, not a confused father who had married or dated a Kardashian. In Ireland and Scotland, however, Black and McLeisa claim that Allison is most likely a form of the son of Alice. This made me wonder if Allison has a distinct history from Allison. As it turns out, Allison has an antebellum history, at least in the USA. I can also tell you that there are Allisons in Australia, Canada, New Zealand, and South Africa. But their ancestors mostly appear in their records after the period of the American Civil War, 1860s, early 1860s that is. One of the earliest Allisons that I could find in Appalachia was John Allison. He was born in 1791 and lived his life in Pennsylvania, passing away there in 1851. Going back further in time, I found another John Allison who was born in 1720 in Pennsylvania, but like the family of Daniel Boone, he moved to North Carolina. His papa was William Allison. He was born in Londonderry or Derry, Ireland, depending on your politics, if you're Catholic, it's Derry. If you're a Protestant, it's London Derry. He was born in 1690. He married Grizel, or Grizzle, <laughs> I think it's Grizzle, 
my great-great-grandmother on my dad's side was a Grizzle. McAllister in, anyway, she was uh, Grizzle McAllister, and she was also from Ireland. They got married in 1715. They relocated to Derry, Pennsylvania, obviously a place where Catholics had a, a major influence, where they remained for the rest of their lives. Looking at the Y chromosomes of Alice and men, haplogroups R1b1, specifically RM269, or one of its subclades, like RL151, is by far the largest cluster. The Scandinavian I haplogroup is the second largest cluster of Y chromosomes. There are a handful of J and E haplogroup members in the Alice and DNA project. Both are mostly found in Africa, the Middle East, and fewer still in Asia and Europe. At the end of the day, if you're an Allison man, I recommend having your Y chromosome tested and try to match it to your paper trail. Well, folks, that's about all I have for you today. I hope you got something meaningful out of the discussion and will join me again here on the Vantage Point. If you'd like a free copy of the list of names and families that we've covered thus far, write to me at vantagepoint22 at gmail.com and I'll send it to you ASAP. Uh, since I was a teenager, I battled uh, quite a few orthopedic issues stemming from degenerative bone disease. On Wednesday, I will undergo my 12th orthopedic surgery. This time, it will be on my left shoulder, a total shoulder replacement. I'll probably be out of pocket for a couple of weeks. But until I see you again, may the good Lord bless and keep you. May he make his face shine on you and give you peace. Bye-bye.